what I hear is people just get the rug pulled out. And like you said, COVID, like people lost their jobs because they weren't willing to comply with the, the standards and what uh, their businesses were requiring. And uh, I know that feeling, but it's in that moment where we like, we're either in touch with a, a higher mission or maybe it's something we still need to discover for ourselves. If that job, you know, is not working out, you know, it's just, it's even, let's say you just don't even want to go back. Maybe you, you got the rug pulled out during COVID. The question is, do you want to go back? Do you, do you like what you do? Is that what you want to do? Maybe just on your own, like there's no right or wrong, right? It's just, there's that fear. There is going to be that, that fear and that stress once you're on your own for sure. So tell us why you're not just hanging out at the beach and running your business in two hours a day, the way the, I guess the four hour work week would suggest less than two hours a day. So tell us why that's not a reality. You know, I, I, I get it. Like people, you'll see Facebook ads, you know, start your own business. You'll see a beach and somebody's climbing canyons and doing all this stuff. And I get what they're implying. Like you're free in a way, right? You're free to do what you want. But the reality is like, you have extreme ownership over your life now. And it's up to you to manage yourself and everything, your whole day. You know, I, I just, talked to a client just before this who was panicking and stressing because she didn't know when to start working. She didn't know when to stop working. <laughs> you know? And uh, I was like, yeah, when in my first few months on my own, like I was all over the place, like no bound, my boundaries disappeared when I lost my structure, you know, eight to five, you know, whatever full-time job, <clears throat> but they became even more important to establish if I was not only going to stay sane, but also build a successful, thriving business, like boundaries and sleep and eating well and exercising now really became just even more important. And because of that, you know, there's going to be time for the beach. It's no different than if you had a full-time job, you can make time to go to the beach. You can make time to go mm. swim and, you know, go, go through hiking and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. but you have more ownership now, which can be terrifying. Right. So I have a, a, some specific things I want to address. So yeah. one of them is that your income is unpredictable and you still have to pay the bills. And the other is that you have to deal with a lot of rejection. So those are the things I want to talk about. Yeah. You know, the bills, right? Like, isn't that the reason why people are at a full-time job? I got to pay bills. Right. So as soon as that's gone, the whole, the whole getting fed something to pay your bills is gone. And so you have to replace that. And, you know, somebody told me, um, it was a coach of mine years ago and actually ended up making the process easier for me when she told this by telling me, Lydia, this will be the hardest thing you ever do, which is basically, going from a six figure job, like I had a six figure income uh, working for the government, but I was trying to replace that working for myself, generating money from a skill that I had on, on my own, right. Marketing on my own. And she told me this was going to be the hardest thing. And, and I was like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for telling me that because now I know what to expect. And it's, I know now not to expect easy because it is not easy to, to learn to get eyeballs, right? It's, we are in a society where it's just a war for eyeballs <laughs> on social media, but it doesn't mean you can't get eyeballs. It doesn't mean you can't build a brand. It's just a question of how. Mm. So um, uh, but in terms of paying your bills though, um, your income is very unpredictable. Your bills are always there. And so I think in the beginning, people have to really scale back their expenses. But instead, people are fed this whole idea that you have to invest money to make money. And so many people are tempted to throw a lot of money into their business at first, and then they're even further in the hole. So mm -hmm. could you talk about that a little? Yeah, you know, again, going back to the ignorance of, of how, um, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a difficult process. It's a challenge, right? It's not easy, but it's doable. But, you know, I started out like probably a lot of entrepreneurs just throwing money into advertising, just not even having an, a niche, a proper, clear messaging. And I just started throwing ads into, um, I'm sorry, 
throwing money into ads, throwing money into a website and without a clear message, without a clear niche and without a plan. And, you know, I'm, I will be perfectly transparent and I almost from all of my retirement, I, I cashed out and put in Facebook ads and never came back. Like it's gone. But, um, I, I promised myself I was going to bring that back and more. So I'm, I'm not even worried about that, but at the time, you know, I, I was negative 30,000 my first year in business, you know, well, this is very (laughs) helpful information for people. Although I have to say that, um, the founder of Netflix, uh, his name is Mark Rudolph. He wrote this great book that's called That Will Never Work. Because when they started Netflix, everything they did, they were told that will never work. And in fact, a lot of the things they did didn't work. And it took a lot of incremental change to come up with something that did work, but their core ideas are still there and still everybody told them wouldn't work. So now he has a podcast and a book and um, one of his basic messages is nobody knows what will work. And everybody's trying to sell you this advice, but nobody knows, nobody could predict everything that has worked has not been predicted and it's always been that way. And so he advocates incremental implementation, experimentation. So people have often heard this referred to as the minimum viable product. So you go out with something limited and then you do more. And I also want to mention that when I started my project, I'll call it a project because since I'm retired, I wasn't really doing it for money. So I went out with this message and all these advertising people tried to sell me stuff. And they all told me that what I was doing was wrong that nobody wants to hear about animal brain and um, nobody wants to hear about dopamine and serotonin. And, you know, you're supposed to sell the sizzle, not the steak. So I'm supposed to say, do you want to be happier? You can be happier. And I thought, yeah, but millions of people are already saying that. I tune out instantly when I hear these canned messages. So everyone told me I was wrong and I just ignored them. But if I were trying to pay the bills, then that would be all that much more pressure. Yeah. I mean, there's like, I'm, I'm not going to discount that. Like there's always something in the back of my mind that like, Hey, I just want to make sure my bills are covered. Right. Like that's a, that's a real thing. You want to make sure that's covered, but I think where it gets messy is when we let it drive our behavior, especially with clients. Right. And, and going back to, you were talking about rejection Uh, you know, very real thing, but honestly, you know, I removed that word from my vocabulary. I don't, I don't use rejection anymore because it's more of like, I think for me, it's more of like that I'm realigning with the right person when, when the wrong person says no or moves away. So I feel like that word rejection just implies like, sulking and I'm not good enough and we're not good enough. And it's really just like, it's not a match, you know, and that's okay. We're not, the whole world is going to like us. Like it's, it's not possible (laughs) for the whole world to be our client or to like who we are. It's just, it's not, it is not possible. And when we let go of that need for everyone to like us or for everyone to like our product or service, that's where the money really actually starts to come in because now you're only talking to people who actually care about what you have. Yes, great. I know that there's this whole new agey idea that you should not worry about meeting your survival needs because that's like considered base and we should be more spiritual. But the reality is that our brain evolved to focus on survival needs. So Mm -hmm. if you are saying, oh, I'm not gonna worry about paying the bills, but then the bills are sitting there unpaid, then you really are worried, but because you're not consciously acknowledging it with your verbal brain, you're generating all this cortisol and you don't know where it's coming from. Now, adding to that, either you have a family that you're trying to support or you're giving up having a family. And either way, that's like, I can't have a family until I, make this business a success. And that is all the more pressure. Now, when I say a family, I'm not saying everyone should have children, but whether it's a partner or whatever it is, there are other people involved and you want a social support network. And that involves sharing your financial world with someone else and they need to be on board with this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, 
and I can definitely relate to this. Like I was in the trap of like, you know, I'm not going to date again. Like when I lost my job, like priority shifted really quick, <laughs> right? Like I was now negative money and negative, you know, whatever I was making per month. And I had to make that up. So yeah, I mean, it's, it is a survival need. And, and I'm so, I'm so glad you pointed that out, Dr. Loretta, because yeah, there is this new age, like don't do it for the money do it, you know, it should be your pride and joy. And, and this sort of like guilt and shaming sort of based thinking. And, you know, and, and this is sort of where I get into setting your prices. When I talk about setting your price with clients, like you, you get to pay your bills, like you get to survive. And if anybody tells you differently, like run for the hills, (laughs) because you're, you know, if you're thinking about starting a business, you're no different than a plumber. You're no different than a carpenter or someone working for a bank. Like they're paying their bills and you get to do if you're running a business. So this magical thinking that, um, first of all, you're, you're so right. Like it's a survival need. Your body's going to feel it. You're going to feel pressure we need money to survive. That's just it. But, you know, if that's your only driver, I think that's Mm. where it becomes a, uh, becomes a little bit of a problem if it's Mm. the only motivation. Mm. So,